So I'm officially off trail and home for good. Hi everyone, my name is Laura and I recently attempted to through hike the Appalachian Trail this year. Today I'm here to discuss how, why, who, what, when, where, how, ultimately what led me to decide to get off trail and stay home for good. So if you were following along with my Appalachian Trail vlogs, then you know I have been struggling with whether or not I should stay on trail for quite a while now. Yesterday, I don't know man, I've just been debating getting off trail and... I don't know, it's to the point where I'm like wishing I get hurt so I get off and like that's really bad. Oh, I just remember this, so I said we would talk about the whole quitting thing too, so. Day 36 basically is when it kind of all really culminated into a big choice and a big thing that led me to get off trail. Day 36, I set out from the Appalachian Trailer by myself in the morning. Physically, I was still in pain even though I had taken a zero the day before. Um, my feet were in pain, my ankles were in pain. I was just in pain. <laughs> Mentally, I was not in the hike that day. I didn't wanna leave my nice warm bed. I was not ready for the hike, but <clears throat> I was supposed to go out and hike, so that's what I did. I remember I hiked from Hot Springs all the way up to almost the top of Rich Mountain and I basically was having like a mental breakdown and I was like, I can't keep hiking today. Like I need to get off trail. Well, I'm walking so low right now. <laughs> so um, I hiked back down. I decided that I was going to go to a hostel and get off trail and just take three zeros. A family member had heard this advice from someone along his journey and shared it with me that before you quit, you should always take three zeros and really decide if you want to stay on trail or not. So that was kind of my plan. I had some family that was out visiting at the time, so they decided that they were going to get off trail with me as well. And they wanted to go to Pigeon Forge where Dollywood was, so that was kind of the plan, and they had the car, so that's what I did, and I went with them. When I originally got off trail that day, I wasn't thinking I was quitting the trail. There was a moment where I was like, maybe I'll quit and I'll go home, but in my brain, I was like, you know, I'm probably gonna take these few days of zeros, and I'm gonna wanna get back on trail. I think at that time, I just really wanted to take a break from trail, not so much like fully get off. Very next day, day 37, we decided to hang out in Pigeon Forge. We were gonna go to Dollywood that day. And unfortunately, uh, Dollywood was closed. So we went and saw a movie instead, got some dinner and kind of just hung out. Again, I was leaning towards not quitting that day. I was more leaning towards wanting to take more of like a long break, maybe head to some family member's house and take like a week long break somewhere where I wasn't having to like pay for a hotel stay or a hostel stay and just like really rest my body, rest my mind and get my head right to get back out on trail. And that's kind of what I was leaning towards at that moment. Um, and I didn't really communicate that to anyone. That's just what I was thinking in my brain because I didn't want to say this is how I'm feeling and then, you know, change my mind the next day. So the next day, day 38, we checked out of our hotel. We went to Dollywood for the day and kind of the game plan was that we were gonna go to Asheville the night before, so we, or that night, that night, the night after we went to Dollywood, we were gonna drive to Asheville. And we would be closer to trail so we could get back on and that was kind of the game plan. I don't know what happened in my family members' heads. I don't know what went on, but by the end of the day, they decided that they wanted to fly home the very next morning. And I was kind of like propelled into the situation of whether I was going to drive with them to Charlotte or whether I was gonna get dropped back off at trail. Now, it was a very short time period. Um, I didn't have a lot of chance to really like weigh my options, but I knew I wanted to take a break 
and I didn't know whether I wanted to spend the money to stay like in Asheville or to stay in a hostel in Hot Springs again, <laughs> like go back to Hot Springs and just stay there. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do, um, but I only had a few minutes basically to decide. And I decided, you know what, I can fly home and basically rest up until I'm feeling better, whether it be a week, two weeks, whatever. And when I'm feeling better, I can fly back out. And that's kind of where my head was at. And I was like, that's what I'll do. And that's it. So day 39, I had a flight out of Charlotte. I hung out at the hotel that morning, took the shuttle, went to the airport and I flew home. That evening was really weird for me. I apologize, my air conditioning is coming on so it's gonna get a little bit harder to hear me. But that evening I got home and um, it felt really weird to be home, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I just remember like feeling like I, I shouldn't be here and I wasn't supposed to be here. That very next day, I my first full day back, I jumped into regular life basically, like regular societal life. I did a job interview that I had applied for when I was out on trail. It was like a virtual like recorded interview type situation. I did that in the morning first thing. I got up, did some research, got my face, my hair, everything all ready. I did the interview. I then decided I wanted to go for a run. I made a grocery list. I made a to-do list. Like basically went back to like how I was pre-trail and like went back to normal life basically. Um, and then towards the evening time, I still felt really weird. I felt like I shouldn't be here, but I was like, you know what? Like I was still in the mindset of like, I might be going back on a trail, so it's okay. So now it's been about four full days since I've been home and I've officially decided that I'm gonna stay home for good. Now this might be quick to some of you guys to be thinking, you've only spent four days at home, you wanted a week long break, like why are you deciding this already? Um, we'll talk about it. I'm gonna share with you guys the reasons that ultimately led me to stay home for good. By making this decision, this is not to say that I won't be going out and hiking anymore this year or when, it's just basically saying I'm not gonna be through hiking this year. It's just not in the cards for me right now. So I wanna discuss what ultimately led me to decide to not get on a plane and fly back to Hot Springs and keep heading north. So let's start with physical pain. Um, <laughs> this is probably one of the number one reasons why I got off trail was my physical pain. Starting off trail, I began having issues with my left knee. I remember the very first day climbing up the stairs, my right knee hurt and I was like, oh no, like I'm gonna have knee issues the whole trail, like this is gonna suck, like <sighs> went to bed, woke up the next morning, I was fine. By day two, maybe day three, my left knee this time was giving me some pretty major pain. Um, basically any time I would step down with my right leg and my left knee bent, it would hurt. Um, if I stepped up with my left knee, it hurt. Um, even walking sometimes, depending on the angle of which the trail was going, my, my knee would hurt. So I was having this pretty major pain for the first couple weeks in my knee, um, along with all the regular like soreness and whatever. And and so by the time we got to Hiawassee area, I decided, okay, we're gonna take a Zira, hustle around the bend, and that'll be good for me and I'll be fine after the Zira. Um, coming out of the Zero, it did feel better. It wasn't as painful, but I was still struggling with some lingering pain when I would step down, um, but it wasn't as bad. Um, nothing too, too crazy. So moving on to the ankles. Um, my ankles, became a major issue when we started pushing bigger miles. Basically when we started doing consistently above eight miles um, or when we would have a lot of bigger mileage days back to back, um, I started noticing sharp pain in my ankles. Um, at first it was just the right ankle and then the left ankle would start to chime in, um, but this became a, a regular thing for me. Um, usually about after four, five, six miles every day of hiking, I would start having this sharp pain in my ankles um, and this would happen every single day, <laughs> every day. Typically, um, I would go to bed and it would subside after 
sleeping for a few hours. I would wake up the next morning, still be a little sore, but it wasn't like sharp pain like I was experiencing like later into the hike every day. So I wasn't too, too concerned with that, but it was definitely uncomfortable for me. Now my feet. So <laughs> this is where I really started to get some concerns, right? My feet would have sharp pain in them, similar to like my ankles where it was after about four, five, six miles of hiking that day, I would start to get sharp pain in the arches of my feet and it was very uncomfortable to hike on hiking um over the rocks you know any anything that was not stable flat ground was really 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 painful <laughs> now this is normal right everyone has painful feet after hiking i remember doing long distance runs and my feet would hurt but where i started to have major issues with my feet pain and and what concerned me was when I got to Standing Bear and I looked at my feet and they were completely swollen in the arch area. Like, scary swollen. I was concerned. Um, and for someone, myself, who struggled with plantar fasciitis growing up, this was bringing back all the worries, all the anxieties, and I was pretty concerned with how the rest of this through hike was gonna go if this is how my feet were reacting basically a month into the hike, because by the time we got to Standing Bear, it was, a, it was about a month in. Every morning, you know, I would wake up, I would have that hiker wobble that everyone talks about, you know, it's normal. And my feet and ankles would be sore, but you know, after about a mile of walking, they would warm up, they'd be okay for a few miles, and then four, five, six miles into the day, it would start giving me that sharp pain again, and it really sucked. The day I got back from trail, my feet were wrecked. Um, they were still swollen. I tried to do some exercise the first few days so I wouldn't lose my trail legs because you know, they say you don't wanna lose your trail legs and then go back out on trail and then starting all back from zero again, building it all back up. So I was really trying not to lose those. So the first day I remember I went out and I went for a run. I knew it would make me feel better to go for a run because I enjoy running. It's a big hobby of mine. And um, so I did about a mile around the neighborhood, nothing crazy. I wasn't doing it at any crazy speeds or anything. Um, and my feet were sore, they were in pain, um, but it wasn't horrible. I iced them, stretched them out. I did all the normal stretches that I would for running, you know, yada, 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 whatever. The next morning I tried to go for a run again and I couldn't even make it half a mile. <laughs> it was so painful. I, I just remember being like, oh goodness, like what am I gonna do if this is how the pain is just after a month of hiking on the trail? Like how am I to go back out and ruin my body even more than what it's ruined at this point? This pain really worried me because I do have other goals in life like long distance running, I wanna do a marathon someday, I wanna run the New York City Marathon, I wanna run Boston Marathon, I wanna do all those big runs, those major runs, you know? And I, I was very concerned after that second run that wow, this physical pain may ruin my running career. I may never get back to normal running again. I really wanted to just get back out, continue running, building my trail legs, enjoying being outside at home, um, and hopefully that would re-inspire me to get back out on trail, but it kind of did the opposite. It kind of made me really think physically with this amount of pain that my feet and my ankles were in just from doing one mile run and then a half a mile the next day. Is it even feasible for me to go out? Should I even do that to my body for all these other goals that I have in life? So that was kind of the physical pain that, um, made me feel like I should stay home. But mentally, I was also starting to have struggles. I was also starting to break down out on trail. It was really tough for me to balance what I wanted and what I thought this through hike should do and what my needs were physically, um, as far as like my pain and stuff. And balancing that with what the group wanted and what the group saw fit to do. It was really tough for me to balance that. 
I found myself sacrificing a lot of my rest time to hang out with the group um, and no fault to them, no fault to them. Um, they had their own ideas of how they want their through hike to go. And I remember even expressing to them at one point, like you guys go ahead on without me. Um, if I feel comfortable doing the amount of mileage that you guys are doing, I'll try. But if I can't do it, then I, then I'll just stay back and that's fine. Like you guys go on ahead without me. But I still found myself sacrificing what I wanted to be able to hang out with the group and to be able to stay with the group because I, a big part of me going on this through hike was actually to make friends. If you guys watched my why I want a through hike the Appalachian Trail video from last year, you know that a big part of why I wanted to go out there was to find friends who are interested in the same thing I'm interested in, i.e. hiking. <laughs> so in my head, it was really hard for me to say, you know, my body is in a lot of pain. I should slow down and stop doing this big mileage because if I did that, I would be by myself. And it was really hard for me to be able to continue pushing on that mileage. Mentally, my confidence went down. I was not comfortable with that amount of mileage, but I continued to do it. Going on this trip, I wanted to become stronger minded. I wanted to become more comfortable with my abilities and gain confidence in myself again. Because I was pushing this bigger mileage to keep up with the group, I found myself doubting my abilities a lot and doubting myself pretty much daily, hourly, minute by minute, doubting myself. Basically, I would hike into camp, you know, Everyone's excited that I'm there because they weren't sure if I was gonna make it that amount of mileage. Typically, I would be one of the last people to get to camp that evening. I would be in major pain by the time I got there, so I was not in the mood to like be all excited and hang out with everyone and whatever. Um, I would set up camp in pain. I would eat dinner in pain. If we were hanging out that evening, I would hang out and be in pain <laughs> the whole time I was sitting there and then I would go to bed in pain and get horrible sleep because I was in pain. Basically, wash, rinse, repeat every single day, that's what would happen. The cycle of just pushing myself to that amount of pain and feeling like I couldn't do it really started to affect my confidence in my ability to finish this through hike. When I would speak to others at camp, um, basically they, would tell me or they would appear from my eyes to not be in as much pain as I was. So it started to make me feel like, why am I in so much more pain than everyone else? Am I even gonna make it to Katahdin? It really like played mind tricks on me being out there. And as much as everyone told me to hike my own hike, it was really hard to do that when you're part of a group already. It felt as though my body was breaking down, my confidence was breaking down, and prior to leaving before trail, I, I wanted to be happy and be able to feel more confident in doing things on my own. You know, before I left for trail, I did stuff on my own all the time. <laughs> I was Miss Independent. I went on trips alone. I would go out to eat alone. I would hike alone, camp alone. I did things by myself, Miss Solo Dolo, you know? Coming back from trail these last few days, I have felt so like, sheltered and like scared to go do stuff on my own. I'm scared to go to the grocery store by myself. I'm scared to drive by myself. I'm scared to go hike by myself on a trail that I have hiked on so many times. Scared to do that. And I really don't like that I have lost this confidence in myself just to even do a day hike. The trail basically, I shouldn't say the trail, I should say more how I was doing the hike how I was making choices along this hike to be part of the group instead of doing what I wanted to do really affected my confidence. And again, no fault to the group. They were doing what they wanted to do. They were hiking their own hikes. I was just making the decision to go along with them. And unfortunately that really weighed on me mentally a lot and physically. Moving forward, I want to be able to not be mentally miserable, not be doubting myself daily. And I think by going back out to trail, I would really harm myself mentally because I just would be comparing myself to other hikers. 
And I think at this time, I'm just not mentally strong enough to be able to do my own thing. I think maybe in future years, I'll have that confidence to say, you know what? I'm doing this hike my own way. I'm not gonna worry about the rest of the groups that are or people around me and what they want. I'm gonna do it what I want. And if they wanna come with me, great. If they wanna do their own thing, great. But at this time, I just, I don't think that that's very feasible for me. So mentally, that's where I'm at. There were tons of other reasons why I decided to get off trail, but ultimately those were the two major reasons or two major ideas of why I'm not gonna be continuing this through hike this year. Basically, my physical health and my mental health are more important to me right now. This is not to say that I won't go back out on the AT this year just to do maybe some section hikes or just go out maybe do some trail magic or something. Like, I don't know what <laughs> the rest of this 2023 year holds for me. We'll see. But I think a through hike this year is just not in the cards for me. I don't think that it is physically what I need and mentally what I need at this point in time. I am pretty sad to be ending this through hike. I, I really am. And, um, you know, the thought of failing this through hike is really tough on me. And I know I'm probably going to lose tons of subscribers and I'm probably going to get really mean comments from people telling me that I failed and I suck and whatever. And like, that's going to probably be pretty hard, but you know, it is what it is. I'm making this choice and it is what it is. <laughs> like I said, maybe in years to come. Like I said, maybe in years to come, I will go back out on the Appalachian Trail and try to through hike it, but just not this year. So <laughs> on to what's next for this channel. Am I going to continue posting on this channel? And the short answer is yes. I absolutely enjoy filming and editing. That's one of the things that has gotten me through these last couple days is brainstorming video ideas and stuff that I can do while I'm at home and film and um, things like that. So definitely this channel will not be going away in terms of future video content. Not sure exactly what the content will be moving forward since all my videos lately have been about the Appalachian Trail basically for the last year. <laughs> I do know, however, I will be training for some upcoming races once my ankles and my feet um, have a chance to rest and heal. So I think that would be kind of fun to document if you guys are interested in that. Um, I think it would be really cool to even film the races themselves and take you along with that. I was looking into trying to get one of those cameras that you can like run with that have the gimbals so they like move with your motion and like stabilize it. So that potentially could be something for the future of this channel. Um, if that sounds interesting to you guys, definitely give this video a like and leave a comment down below so I know that you guys would be interested in seeing it. Honestly, I'll probably film it anyways to keep me just accountable in my race training. I also, in the decision to get off trail, decided I should, you know, spend some of the money that I had saved up to do this big trip to book myself a different trip just so I have something to look forward to and I don't fall into you know like a depressive state or anything like that so I did book a trip I am planning on filming that trip so I'm not going to announce where it is for safety purposes but um, definitely be on the lookout for that coming up soon I also plan on doing some smaller hikes this year maybe getting out to finish the foothills trail um, since I never finished it before if y'all followed those videos. Um, I, I said that I wanted to get out and finish that hike, the rest of that trail at some point in time in my life. And so maybe this year is the year to go out and finish it. I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to look at my schedule and, and what's coming of that. So that would be fun to document too. So hiking's not going away fully from this channel. It's just not gonna be the only thing on this channel. Also, I applied for a job. Um, if y'all were watching my vlogs and y'all know what job I'm talking about for the most part, I'm not really sure if I'm allowed to share like the specific company. So I'm not going to, cause I don't want to ruin my chances of getting the job. But um, if I do get that job, that will lead to a lot of traveling for me. 
in the future and that would mean that I would have some cool travel vlogs for you guys. So that would be kind of fun. Um, so basically what I'm saying is, is I'm not sure exactly what this channel's content will be and what this channel's future holds in, its, in itself. But I do know I have some video ideas coming up. I've been brainstorming and basically this channel is not going dark. You will have some video content coming out at you. I'm thinking I'm gonna go back to how it was before trail where I did a video once a week on Tuesdays. Um, not sure if I'll go back to the four o'clock time or if I'll keep the 7 a.m. time. I, I'm thinking the four o'clock time will probably be better. Do end up getting enough content that week or if I have an extra idea for a video that week and I can pull it off, I plan on doing an extra video on Fridays. So you'll at least get a video on Tuesdays, potentially one on Friday as well. So with all that being said, if you all do have any video requests, whether it be about what my future holds, about the Appalachian Trail and my through hike and any other questions like that, definitely leave them down in the comments below. If y'all have any um, other video suggestions like about running, race training, things like that, or any other ideas that I haven't mentioned, definitely leave them in the comments um, and I'll try to make those videos happen for you guys. I currently am not working, so I have more time to do some filming and editing and whatnot. But with that being said, I can't wait to see you all in the next video and see what my future holds. For me. See you all in the next video. Bye.